In this video, we're going to complete example three. It says that Aaron has a bank loan of $2,630 with an interest rate of 4.7% per annum compounded monthly. She makes regular monthly repayments of $620 at the end of the month. And question A wants us to complete the table below. The reason we're doing example three is to get you familiar with a table like this one. Sometimes it can confuse people, but when you get into the question, it's, it's no different to the other questions we've done in previous videos. So first of all, let's bring up our formula here, our recurrence relation. We need to start by finding R, our interest rate as a decimal, and D, which is our repayment. Our repayment is the easy one. D is going to be $620. That's the repayment that we're paying at the end of the month. Calculating R is going to be a little more difficult. We can see that R is 4.7% per annum, but this needs to be compounded monthly. The calculation we would perform is to take our 4.7% and first divide it by 12. Dividing it by 12 will convert our yearly interest rate to a monthly interest rate. We also need to divide this by 100, which will then convert our percentage to a decimal. Let's do this all in one calculation. 4.7 divide 12 divide 100 comes out to 0.00391666. So it's quite a complicated decimal here. I'll start by writing it down. So we've got to think to ourselves, how are we going to substitute this nasty decimal into our recurrence relation? Well, I'll show you how. We'll start by copying parts of the formula down, parts that we're not going to change yet, the VN plus 1 and the VN, and then we'll open our brackets. And we're going to go 1 plus R. Now the problem with writing this decimal down here is that this decimal goes on forever. So if we were to write it down, we would have to round it. And rounding our decimals can cause errors later on. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to write the calculation over here. I'm going to write down 4.7 divide 12 divide 100. This means that I don't have to do any rounding yet. Next, we need to subtract our repayment, our repayment being 620. And we're just going to use this formula to make our calculations. So we'll start where we always start at V0. V0 stands for the value of the loan after zero years has passed, or at the beginning of the loan. We are told that Aaron has a bank loan of $2,630 at the beginning. So V0 is $2,630. Now we'll move on to V1. Remembering that when we calculate V1, to the right of our equal sign, we have V0. Because our subscript to the right is one less than our subscript to the left. We then copy down the rest of the formula. 1 plus 4.7 divide 12 divide 100 minus 620. Remembering that V0 has already been calculated, it's $2,630. So we're going to substitute V0 with 2630 and then we're going to make our calculation. All right, so 2630 times bracket 1 plus 4.7, 1 plus 4.7, divide 12, then divide 100, close our brackets, minus 620. And we get $2,020.30. Let's now move on to V2. 
V2 equals V1. Now, rather than writing V1 down, I'm, I'm going to take a shortcut. I already know what V1 is. It's $2,020.30. Next to this, I'm going to write down the calculations I can see here because these calculations repeat each time. So we'll bring up our calculator. You'll notice that the first value in our calculation is already on our calculator. And the good thing is, is that we haven't rounded this number yet. So let's keep this number on the calculator. We're going to go multiply and then brackets, 1 plus 4.7, divide 12, divide 100, then close our brackets, minus 620, and we get $1,408.21. Let's now find V3. What we need to do is we need to take the previous result, $1,408.21, and perform the same calculations next to it that we have been doing previously. When we bring up our calculator, we already have this amount on there. And even better than that, it hasn't been rounded. So we're going to keep going on with our calculation. Times bracket 1 plus 4.7 divide 12 divide 100 close our brackets and subtract the 620 giving us $793.73 now we also need to calculate v4 but first I'm going to make some room so to calculate v4 we start by taking the previous result, which was $793.73. We then copy down the rest of the calculation that has always remained the same. When we bring up our calculator, the previous result is still in the calculator. So we go times bracket 1 plus 4.7, divide 12, and divide 100, close our brackets, minus 620, and we get $176.84. All right, so, so far, everything that we have been doing is exactly the same as what we've been doing in previous lessons. And what can come, become difficult for people is filling in the table. That, that can confuse people sometimes. We'll start with the easy part, this column here, which has the capital letter D, which stands for our repayment. Of $620. Now the repayment never changes. So I'm going to fill this in. I'm just going to say that that's $620 each time. What really confuses people is when they have to fill in the VN plus 1 column and the VN column. So we'll start by looking over here at the left. We're told that N plus 1 equals 1 for the first row. So if n plus 1 is 1, when we substitute it into vn plus 1, we get v1. And in the next row, v2 and v3 and v4. So the last column actually matches up with the first column, except that we put a v in front of the number. Now that we've done that, we can find VN, remembering that VN has a subscript that's one less than VN plus one. So if this is V1, over here we're going to have V0, and then V1, V2, and V3. Once you've done this, you can then fill in your values. We know what all of these equal because we've got the values written down below. So V0 is $2,630. And V1 came out to $2,020.30. And there's 
and v1 is written down twice. It's written here and it's written over here. So we're going to repeat it. $2,020.30. Now let's look for v2. v2 came out to $1,408.21. $1,408.21 and I'm going to write it down twice because we have V2 written down twice. V3 now is $793.73 and we're going to write it down twice because we have V3 twice. And finally V4 which is $176.84. Let's now move on to question B. It says, how much interest did Erin pay over the four month period? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at what V4 is. We're gonna look at what the loan reduced to at the end of the fourth month. It reduced to V4 equals $176.84. And I want you to think to yourself, what would happen if the bank did not charge me interest? So Erin had a loan of $2,630. That's how much she owed the bank at the start. And each time she made her a payment. So whenever she made her a payment, her loan would reduce by this payment. And she did it four times, so we'll times this by four. Let's make this calculation now. 2,630 minus our repayment of 620 performed four times. And it takes us down to $150. What does this 150 mean? Well, if Erin was not charged interest, this is how much she would have owed the bank after the four months. But instead, after four months, she owed this amount, which is slightly more than $150. And that is because she's been paying interest. So the difference between these two amounts is the interest. Let's write I for interest. There's $176.84 minus $150. This will come out to $26.84 in interest that she paid over the period of four months. Question C says, how much extra must she put toward the final loan repayment in order to pay off the loan completely? And you might remember that after the final payment at V4, after four months, she owed $176.84. If she had paid an extra $176.84 on the final payment, her loan would have gone down to zero and she would have paid off the loan completely. So the answer to question C is basically the same as the solution to V4. It's $176.84. Anyway, that concludes our video on example three. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.